everyone, and welcome to the recap. 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 I'm Pastor Andy, joined I'm by Pastor, Pastor Stewart. Stewart. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we worked really hard at not looking like each other, so, yeah. um, you know, I went with plaid. This is very unusual for me. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and we're going to talk about uh, stuff that happened and stuff you talked about this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, that was February 6th. We're recording this just a few days later, and we're going to try to make this short. Our last week was really short, and I liked it. So, uh, you know, we'll see how far we can get with that. We don't have our little timer over there, but I think we'll wing it. So here we go. Pastor Stewart. Pastor Andy. Uh, in one minute or less. Tell us, what in the world did you talk about this past Sunday? Yeah, last Sunday, uh, Jacob realizes it's time for him to leave, and he expresses a desire to leave. And Laban says, no, hang around. Um, and, he, and he already owes Jacob money because in Jacob's viewpoint, he's, he's changed the deal over and over and over, which he did. So Jacob says, tell you what, if you'll just let me have all the spotted and striped sheep uh, or goats, I'll take those and you keep the pure white, pure black ones. So Laban says, great idea, I'll do that. And then he takes all of the sheep that should have been Jacob's and sends them three days journey with his sons just to mess with Jacob again. But Jacob uh, either knew or God told him that if you take these branches off certain trees and strip it to, so you get down to the wood, strip the bark and put it in water and warm the water, it'll release chemicals that make the sheep healthier and hardier. And so he did that. And the way it read in the King James Bible, you always think that sheep were just looking at the sticks and so they were given striped babies. Mm -hmm. But it was the fact that God knew the genetics of the male sheep. That was the miracle. And, uh, and so Jacob had stronger sheep by the end of the whole process mm -hmm. than his father-in-law Laban because he was a shepherd. He knew what to do. Yeah. So it was sort of, the, but that Jacob didn't come at that in a deceitful way. He had been, de he was deceived and he coped he, with it. He coped with He figured out a solution without hurting the other guy. There we go. That's yeah. one minute. That's Good. not bad. I, it may have been just a smidge more, but we'll find yeah. out when I edit it. When I take that one little detour back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I just have two questions, maybe okay. a third. And um, I wrote them down, but I didn't give them to you. So yes. here we go. Going cold and I, here. And I thought of this. It's amazing that um, God would bring a nation from this kind of crazy yeah. rivalry. and. Boy, but you, you pointed that out in something that that um, it, it's right there in the scripture that there was there was blatant rivalry between yeah. the two sisters. Blatant. I'm striving. I'm wrestling with my sister. My sister has done this. My sister has done that. It's all right there. Yeah. And now it, maybe he'll like me better. And I've overcome my sister. All yeah. that's in there. Oh gosh, it's, it's horrible. And that we f will find out plays out in the lives of the siblings as they go along and they don't always get along right. as they ought. And I think, you know, if I had to um, build a nation, I think I would hand pick and not birth pick because right. you know, having, you know, you yeah. have three kids, they're all different. Man, um, wow. So what, what does this say about God's will? Well, number one, that he knows the end from the beginning. Uh, he knows the conclusion of the matter. And that we believe in the power and the strength of God so much, and we would call that the sovereignty of God, but I don't want to give it a common name that makes you shut off. Um, God is able to engineer the circumstances to achieve his will, even if those circumstances look really odd to us. Um, so, yeah, uh, one, <laughs> there was a songwriter many years ago, and he wrote a song about Jacob and his two wives, and uh, you are talking about the sibling rivalry, uh, in the song, he said, Jacob learned it's one thing to win them, it's another to keep them satisfied. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are in the middle of the struggle of Jacob to keep his two wives satisfied. Chapter 30. Chapter 31, he is going to break away, and that may be the thing coming up. Um, but we see God's will happening there in, in some uh, pretty neat ways as well. So we'll, we'll come to that this Sunday. I'll stop from, from doing that. But yeah, God has to use messy situations, messy people, because that's all he has to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, what stood out for me was within the midst of that mess, it, it showcases God's choice. Right. God, God doing the work, not, uh, well, they came from a good family. It seems like when you say something like that, you think, well, they came from privilege or they came from... Uh, 
you know, all kinds of other circumstances instead of saying God did something in that person's yeah. life. And you've, you, you, and, we and both know of people that have come from yeah. Christian families that did not turn right. out well. well. Of course, and and honest to goodness, people saying we did ev- we thought we did everything right, right, truly, and we repented when we needed to repent. We glorified God when we needed to glorify. We're always trying to do that. We were humble, blah 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 blah, and still this child rebelled. Right. Yeah, I I am not responsible for the choice of my parents or my children, but I am responsible to them to act in a godlike way or Christ-like way mm-hmm. towards each of them. But their that choice has to be theirs. Yeah. Um, and we call it a choice, but when God when God calls, how will you respond? We do our best to help them to respond in a positive way to that. Um, and, and you talking about that reminded me of something else. Um, I heard uh, the guy that does, and uh, I forgot what it's called now, but anyway, uh, the little videos we showed at Christmas, he does those. Oh, yeah, Bible did, Project. Bible Project. Mm-hmm. He does that for the whole Bible. Mm-hmm. And this past week, I heard him say, in the garden, we have the snake. And the Hebrew is this uh, the sense of a fiery serpent or a deceiver or an antagonist against God. And God, and he makes, he takes a man and makes him like him, makes him a deceiver. Because when God confronts Adam, Adam blames God, then blames his wife. God talks to his wife, and she blames Satan or the snake and then God talks to the snake and and curses him and so the snake was able to take a man and turn him into a snake in Jacob the deceiver the heel grabber the one who would lie like Satan did God's taken him and turned him back into a human wow isn't that marvelous what God does yeah Yeah. it's a it's a picture and it's all in the same book the book of beginnings yeah next question yes Um, still within the realm of God's will knowing God's will um, some folks really struggle yeah. with knowing God's will. And they're, sure. they're kind of, uh, there are deeper issues than what usually someone will say, I don't know what God's will is. It, it's usually, you know what it is, but yeah. you really don't like it. Right. You know, And that's a different issue. But um, some people will go to crazy lengths to find out the future. Right. It's, it's nuts. We know this. There's plenty right. of books you can find. Divination, psychs, psychics, uh, sages, horoscopes. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list goes on yeah. and on. Ghost whispers. Yeah, yeah. For someone, so the question is, for someone who's anxious about these kinds of, about God's will, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that parts of God's will are unknowable to our to us, um, that we have to, in a sense, have to live the best we know how and then see what happens. We know God's will in reverse, but we have struggled on it in the future. And you said something in the beginning I think people want to know God's will or, or struggle with God's will in two ways. And the one is what the one we're talking about. We want to know the future. And that's why we go to these other um, demonic things, actually trying to figure out the future. Um, the other way they str- struggle is, is looking backward. Why did God let that happen? Mm-hmm. Why was that God's will? And the worst question you can ask about God's will is what is it or why is it? The best question you could, or why did God do that? The best question is, what is God trying to do through me, in me, for me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not to me. It's not, it's not, it's God's will for the Christian is never to hurt us, but he may allow hurt to do something else in us. Mm -hmm. So we have to have that perspective that no matter what I suffer or, or am blessed with on this earth, it's only given to me to help mold the image of Christ in me. And so... Mm -hmm. We can endure bad things. We can endure good things if if we're we're looking at that. And then, um, as you were asking the question, my mind leapt to uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He says, "Don't worry about tomorrow, for each day has enough evil in it. Live in this day." The Christian only gets one day, and it's the day they're living in. Mm-hmm. And Paul was always talking about the day he lived in and the day when he sees Jesus. And those were the only two days in his mind. Mm-hmm. And we would do well to think that way, too, that, you know, we make plans and all of that. But James tells us, but you should say, if the Lord wills. Right. And then I think the will of God, we want to know his will, but that's more of a selfish thing. What we ought to focus on is being the person God wants us to be and then walking in his ways. And then if I'm doing that and none of us can do it at perfection, let me give that caveat. But if we're doing that we will be walking into his will or in his will. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so we worry about knowing it because we are a curious creature. We want mm-hmm. to know stuff. That's a bit when, like God. Yeah. yeah, He put that in us. And it's a it's a it's a it's a slow bake oven. It is it's a crock pot where you'll know it when you get there, but you won't know it before necessarily, mm-hmm. um, because the key for the Christian is to live in the present with God, trust Him with the future, and just walk in that direction. You know, I, I believe sometimes God gives people, you can do this or you can do that, and he's going to accomplish his will, whatever we choose. Just as we see all these Bible characters up to now, Jacob especially, making a bunch of bad choices. Mm-hmm. Yet in all those choices, God still works to get his will done. Mm-hmm. And that that's a mystery that we don't have the brain to totally understand or figure out, right. really. I think it boils down to trust. I think yeah, that's where you're, absolutely. You're that's going. the word. Who is you, you, trust you and obey. There's no other way to, to be, be happy, happy in, in Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Trust and obey. Yeah. Um, and leave the results to him. Just don't worry about tomorrow. Don't right. worry about what's coming. Worry about right. your relationship with Christ. Right. It, it, we give that advice to children. Well, why? Don't worry about it. I told you that. Mm-hmm. You just trust mom. We're going to take care of her. Trust mm-hmm. dad. Um, we tell that to young couples that are desperate to get married, don't have a mate yet. It's like, don't try to find the right person, try to be the right person. Mm-hmm. We're trying to raise our children and we're so concerned about choices they'll make. Hey, show them how to make right choices mm-hmm. and help them in learning how to make choices, but bring them to Christ and right. try to connect them to Christ. And you know, ultimately for all of us, the biggest trust is gonna be when we're dying and not all of us get to see that coming. Yeah. But you know, I, I think about that a lot uh, probably more than the average person, and that may not be true. Maybe everybody does, but I. And sometimes I feel like, yep, don't bother me at all. And then some days I'm like, you know, I may be scared when that comes. I don't know, um, it, just because I'm human and I don't know. And no man knows. That's mm-hmm. that's a question we 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 can't answer. But that is the ultimate trust, and that's what Christ did on the cross. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He gave His spirit. to like mm-hmm. if you're gonna raise, you said you'd raise me from the dead, but even if you don't, my, I trust my out. soul to you. Here launching it is. Launching out, yeah. Sometimes it feels like a launching out. Yeah. Well, we'll end it with that. Um, okay. That's good. So. Uh, Thanks for coming. If it be God's will, uh, we hope to yeah. see you on Sunday. No, we still hope we, to see you on Sunday. Yeah. If it's God's will, we will see you yes. on Sunday. So. We will see you Sunday. That's right. Well, God bless. God bless you. Thank you, Shaka.